seen on the fold before, but now he is. Phoenix is going to play him on the other hand side. What else? Again, the Black Feather. Most likely, again, <laughs> here is Sky, which is now changing sides from God of Sins here, played from Phoenix, now going over to Hammers. Yeah, so already you have a composition that starts to counter out the Glaive. With Black Feather, you can out sustain. And you can outmaneuver it so well that you dive into that back line. But, mm -hmm. you know, Team Phoenix Reborn here, I do like the composition that they're leaning forward yep. uh, with. They do have those two very strong gap closers that can a that's able to dive in on um, on Sky. So, yeah, that Taka pick, um, very interesting. Um, that's going to be... An interesting thing, if we can see, I mean, we have seen Uni, that guy on Taka, uh, go for a tension bow, go for an aftershock, and uh, show the enemy that they can't catch you, you know, kite them, try to go for a lot of damage in a short amount of time. And we see Celeste having her presence in the quarterfinals. Haven't seen her across the board for a long time. However, I personally enjoy playing her recently. It was a little bit of changes in 1.17, you know, a little bit of cooldown reduction for the Heliogenesis, um, which is kind of important and interesting. We see Catherine on the fold as well here for Hammers. It is a whole different composition right now, especially for Phoenix. Do you see any chance that that can make a change? Well, with this one is they're going to be very reliant on Taka being able to delete the target that he jumps onto. And they're going to also be very reliant on how far Celeste can poke uh, with her Heliogenesis. Glaive will be the roamer and Glaive will be the one that's going to be trying to give out that peel, making sure that, you know, Blackfeather doesn't dive way too deep into the back line. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we are going to throw it into the game with our casters, Tasty Bacon, Four Court Jester. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Blueberries. So... We'll see, can Phoenix Reborn turn it around? Can they rise from the ashes and make this a series? Or will Hammers just have another completely dominant performance? With Celeste, a bit of a surprise here, coming out from God of Sins. We'll see how DNZO fares against it on this Black Feather once again. Well, I mean, game number one was definitely just so well done from Dienzo. Like, not only did he actually get the reverse 2-0, but the farm. Then early on, they snowballed that into almost a 12-minute win, so it was close. This time, it feels uh, a little bit closer. It really comes down to how this early game is treated, because Reborn really looking for a fight. Yeah, it looks like it, and they are going to be finding the fight onto Aloha. They get the kill with that afterburn, and now trying to chase down onto Veins as well. A lot of damage coming out, but there's the stun. The Enzio with that on point is going to force them to have to back away. And now Phoenix, this is a oh, great job taking advantage of the fact that they know the tendencies of Hammers. They made it look like they were going to be going and stealing away those backs. It threw Veins out of the lane to try and go answer the invade. And they came very, very close to securing the second kill there. Uh, so unfortunate that... For Phoenix, that Vayne was able to escape, but they were able to at least steal away that forward healing camp. So they got something out of it, um, which is uh, you know a step in the right direction. Yeah, it's a little bit of more oomph and putting up uh, uh, more kills than they had in the entire last game. They've got to be feeling a little bit better about this one. And again, you know, another thing to note is that this is the game where we don't ban Glaive. Every other time we've seen Glaive play, and if he's not played, he's banned. This time, though, the band does not go through. Skoden's able to pick it up, not exactly thinking that he was going to end up on that support, but there's two big targets here for both sides. Celeste and Sky. Taka and Glaive. Glaive can actually do some fantastic things, not only offensively, but defensively here. Uh, whereas Vayne's on that cast, and perhaps he's going to be push pulling you know, a little bit more of a Flash X out of the book here, because if you have those... Uh, not afterwards. If you have those... Blast Tremors, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> then, like... Team Reboard is going to have a hard, hard time here. Yeah, absolutely. And again, Blackfeather is just so hard to contain once you get into the late game. Once he hits level 6, it's so difficult. Even with a Celeste, the Core Collapse has a pretty wide area of effect for that stun. But uh, you know, it, a, a Rose Offensive negates the entirety of it. So we'll see if the NCO, I mean, we obviously know that he, is, he has the reflexes and the mechanics to dodge out those on a very consistent basis. But if just one connects, 
towards the late game, it could spell disaster. So Aloha in lane is definitely ha has a big target on his uh, on his back because not only do we have the stealth from Taka, but immediately you can have an afterburn into a stun or a core collapse into an afterburn. Any combination thereof, and Taka's just wailing on you all day. Uh, so Aloha's got to be very careful if he does actually run into them on a three-man rotation. D'Enzio is going to be a little bit better, uh, definitely a lot better after level six, but the early game pressure hasn't worked out yet, although we are finding this invade with Aloha in the jungle. Yeah, absolutely. Aloha is going to be getting out to safety, but now the rest of Hammer's potentially collapsing on the starting all over in Skogen, but looks like they are just going to let them away, trying to secure their jungle as best they can. Uh, the thing that's kind of surprising to me, starting all over, you know, a lot of times Takas, they like rushing that tension bow, getting that early burst damage. Uh, he went for a heavy steal instead, so I have to assume that the tension bow is actually not going to be coming out. Because if you did go for it, it would be so, so late. So, uh, a, a bit of a mm -hmm. difference in build coming well, from starting all over. Well, D'Enzio already has uh, his Shiver Seal, so that's a little bit extra health. Mm -hmm. Negates the burst just a little bit. Uh, and at the same time, Lohaz has armor. So, he saw this, he said, alright, well, this Tension Bow, it's great for this early game, but... And they're up 1-0, the one kill did go over to him. But he wants to go for a bit more of the longer game, the later game, which I think is the better choice here, because... They might have a good combo, but if they don't, then they've kind of put all their on their eggs in the wrong basket. And if the tension bow doesn't work out, then they're probably going to be in a very bad spot for the mid game, just as you noted. So I really think that going for a sword blade here earlier on is the better choice. Oh, I, I absolutely agree wholeheartedly as well. It's just it it's something different, which is why you know it, it's for. You know, for those of you wondering, uh, back watching at home, it's oh, kind of one. like, oh, why doesn't he have this built? It's, you know, that's the standard build for Taka. There are situations where you do want to switch it up. Right now, Dienzio, he is showing no fear, just walking right into that brush. God of Sins, he wants to recall. He doesn't want any part of this fight, but starting all over is going <laughs> to go down, and they don't really? check that brush. God of Sins is actually going to be able to get out of there. Uh, so a, a risky decision from God of Sins does pay off, but meanwhile, this jungle is going to get stolen away. Uh, God of Sins wants to at least minimize the damage as he goes into the Hammer's jungle to uh, even that up a bit. Yeah, and he will be able to even this up. There's nobody really there at whatsoever. Dienzo is pushing up against going at level 6 versus level 4, so Glaive not having a good time about it. But we do get now a fountain here for our Catherine. So Dienzo, he's just, uh, he should be fine at pushing this lane. He has that level 6. He's trying to see when he can counter with this uh, Rose Offensive, but I guess uh, he was just, the uh, eye is too big, for, too big for his stomach. Yeah, absolutely. He may be getting a little bit too confident after that first game. The Rose Offensive was never even used. So, uh, and he thought he wouldn't get away from Skogen, even if he did, there's an extra two with his name, so he went for the kill. Yeah, he came close to getting the kill, but I definitely feel there may have been a little bit of overconfidence. It is a, you know, one of the very, very few slights against the Enzio, is that he does occasionally lose focus on the game, but that's what uh, Veins and Aloha are there to do is get him refocused. So I'd have to assume if, you know, I, I wish we could get a listen in on their voice comms because I'm sure it, it's one day. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is very likely uh, Veins and Aloha just telling him, you know, take it easy. You know, don't get too over aggressive. Don't get too overconfident uh, because this game is far, far from over. Well, Velocity do, do pick up their Frostburn, and at the same time, starting all over, just uh, just shy of the 7 minute mark, he did pick up that Infusion. So, I mean, if they're up 2-1, they're actually not ahead in gold, but they are up 2-1, and they've seen that they can actually get some of these kills. Now, you know, blood is in the water, starting all over. If he does pop that Infusion, we are going to be looking for some, and he does actually just pop it now, uh, we should be looking for some invades, some confrontations he wants to get a kill and he might actually get it here on aloha and he does picks up both of those backs as well for his trouble and this is again like looking a little bit better the infusion will delay him from the sorrow but this is where they got to make their mark they got to look for some kills here yeah and this is again taka is so strong in the early game he sacrificed a bit of that early game to uh by uh skirting around the tension bow so Damn. that's what the infusion is there to try and uh make up for veins was looking for that gold mine steel but realized you know one versus three just not worth trying to go in 
so it will be the gold miner collected by Phoenix, but now, oh god, it's in. He's yep, in so much trouble. Done. Yeah, stun and done. Easy pickup right there. I guess that uh, they didn't actually think that Dienzio might be countering now. They, we had eyes on him, so that gold mine of me was very clearly known, so they they clean up. Still, now Dienzio, he is running. Looks like uh, that talk worked out, Bacon. Yeah, it did, and that's not quite so, actually, because that is going to be the kill, the Fountain of Renewal getting the save as well as the rose offensive and taka did also take a turret hit in the process so no ace but with that death from above they're going to easily be able to melt through this turret uh god of sins had already thrown out the solar storm as well so really nothing that he could do to try and defend that turret and just like that you know the early game it was looking really good for phoenix they had a lead they were you know bringing the fight to hammers but one kill bad <laughs> one misstep they had a bit, a little bit of a gold lead as well. Did they? At, at one mm. point, it, it was only a couple hundred, but it was a lead. But you know, one misstep, and all of a sudden now they're down by almost two thousand gold. All right, so a few reflex blocks are coming out the gate here as well. You can see one there on Taka, and okay, I guess that was just only the one on Taka. I thought perhaps uh, Aloha had one there as well, but that's just too good, so that's fine. Either way, uh, reflexes are going to be good on both sides, because with that double stun combo, threatening here from Reborn, versus, of course, you know, Vayne as well, uh, you might start seeing a little bit more work towards the Crucible in a bit. That Death from Above not really hitting the mark, but the more defense you can get from these guys, like, you're going to be curbing that damage, uh, especially with Skogin and starting all over. Both of them, you know, primarily focused on weapon. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, the armor is gonna be important and uh, Skojin is actually gonna very likely it's gonna be a while before he gets a, any real weapon damage uh, built you yeah. know, obviously you want to get the, those utilities <laughs> items finished first you know the fountain which is completed warhorn and crucible are so important and honestly with the black feather there I'd say that he also is gonna want to get that atlas pauldron to just try and slow down the NZO uh, and his immense amount of damage, but thus far they haven't really been able to do it. He's the Enzo is two one and one, and now he's just gonna be jumped on, but very little damage actually being dealt. Yeah, he. I mean, he doesn't have that reflex block, so if we did have Skogin going in for the stun, might have been some more damage. But it's a black feather, and he has that armor. He has that shiver steel with it for the health and the life steal on top of it as well. So. I don't really think he was in a huge amount of danger. Uh, he was not going to be dropping anytime soon. 4-3 for kills and about 2,000 gold between teams. This actually could be the first gold mine for Phoenix Reborn. Looks like they are going to get it uh, pretty much uncontested, but that's because Blackfeather's back in base. He does get that Atlas Pauldron, so if Skogin's starting all over, get into this back line, and that Blackfeather is there to protect Aloha, then that Atlas is going to get some huge work out of it. Yeah, or if this Black Feather jumps onto the back line, as we're seeing here, Death from Above is going to come out as well, and everyone is just grouped up on top of it. The health is melting for Phoenix. Goja is going to go down. It's only starting all over left. The forward barrage is doing some damage, but the Kaku is going to get him out of dodge. Mm -hmm. uh, so a nice juke there by the Taka. It's one of the reasons why Taka is the most infuriating hero to play against in the entire game. But and it's still a 2-0. I mean, it, 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 it's 2-0, they're going to be pushing up this lane, Taka's going to get the back, but he just lost out his own anyways, and, I mean, still, if you, if you don't get the ace, 2-0 is not going to be, by any means, a bad trade, especially if you can keep doing it again and again, and 6-3 with 3,000 gold, if they go 2-0 every time with no ace, they're still going to win. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, eventually, you take those small victories, and they start building and adding up, until the point where you are going to be getting those three zeros as now they're going in and oh god of oh, sins is just he, he has no maneuverability and has no uh you know gap closer or dash or anything on the celeste and hammers are just taking full advantage now they're diving in onto skojin skojin will just barely be able to walk away veins is taking a lot of turret damage has to get out of there and reset the uh turret aggro they do just that as they pick up another kill and now another death from above onto the turret. This will be the second turret of the game. You know, a significantly slower pace, 
but still looking very good for hammers. Doesn't matter if you're the roadrunner or a bulldozer, I mean, a win is a win, right? So, eight and three, 4,000 gold and counting. It's almost like every time you throw it back, to me another 1,000 gold in the bank here, Bacon. But uh, the armor definitely worked out very well. You saw, I mean, they just immediately rushed God of Sins. He has nowhere to go. The one reflex block is not going to be enough to kind of deal with Aloha and Veins. And, of course, the Enzio on your face, like, the shield is just going to be non-existent. But you can see, again, like, Skogin trying to do the peel. The Enzio actually failed out that reflex. But at the same time, again, you can see how with these reflexes and now the crucibles, the idea is just to kind of negate any kind of offensive uh, maneuvers for the engagers from Skoden or starting all over or the defensive heals. And I'm just I'm just afraid that we've already reached that point in a return again. Yeah, this is going to be the gold mine started up by Hammers. No steal attempt going to come from Phoenix as they just... They thought about it, they were just like, hey, where are they? Maybe they're at the gold mine. And then they realized just how low it was. And they said, you know, maybe that's not the best of ideas because how far behind we have fallen. And it's almost like that same situation in game number one where it feels like Phoenix just has to play extremely defensively and try and turtle underneath this third turret. But Hammers, they've proven time and time again, they are very good at breaking a defensive siege. Yeah, but I've also seen Velocity in the exact same situation win games from the Abyss. But uh, that's, of course, you know, Velocity, not Team Phoenix. Team Phoenix, unfortunately, just doesn't really seem to have anything kind of going for them this match. Like, they do have a little bit of farm. Early game again, they got some kills, but they never really were able to maintain any kind of cash. And now with this, you know, Kraken coming down a few seconds, look at all those infusions. We have double Crucible ready to go on Dienzio, on Veins. We have that Atlas Pauldron. We got Reflex Block on top of Aloha as well. Trying to heal or trying to engage on this team is just not going to work. Yeah, double infusion picked up right in time for the Kraken. Means that Kraken is going to go over to Hammers. And you can see Phoenix, they're still just sitting back in the lane, sitting underneath these turrets, waiting for the minions to come to them. And Hammers, they're going to be put, making their way down this lane in a slow but steady march beside the Kraken. And again, we saw this happen so many times that the game will just, the push will come in. This first turret, you know, they're, the team usually like tries half-heartedly to defend it. But you, a lot of times will decide, you know, let's just fall back and try and defend under the double turrets. A lot of times teams stick around a little bit too long though, and uh, they get engaged on. So we'll see what Hammers decide to do. They go immediately onto that turret, and you can see Phoenix backing off very quickly. But Skojin gets caught under the death from above, has to use that afterburn to get away. And now Kraken is going on to the crystal turret. And the crystal turrets are just absolutely melting. I mean, it's triple 12 up against the 10, 11, and 12. And the items, the cash, like, fine, we got a reflex box there from God of Sins, but it just puts them into the fountain, and now it's, I mean, it's too little too late, right? That point of no return just does so many, like, great things for Hammer's Velocity. And, you know, it's not a 12-minute win, but hey, you got to be happy with a 16 and a half. They take it 2-0. They will not drop a game up against this team, Bacon. And again, like, the drafts feel a little wonky from two games. Yeah, it definitely felt like Hammers were more in control of their pick and ban phase. I, I was, I don't know if maybe Phoenix was trying to catch them off guard, or if they oh, were just overthinking things or what, but Hammers, they just pick heroes that they're very comfortable with, that they know how to win with, and they use that knowledge to do just that. Well, Rome said that there's a lot of Kestrel coming out from Team Phoenix, and when that gets smashed in a 12-minute match, and then you go into a Celeste with a support Glaive, I mean, like, the kill potential was definitely there. Taka did some work early on. The problem is there just wasn't enough work going around to keep him going, and not going for the Tension Bow, as we did agree was the better of the two options, but going into the Sora, he then went and bought, you know, a 7-minute Infusion. They got one kill out of it, which is not nearly enough to recoup that, delayed his Sora Blade, and then Almost by then, like, it was Danzio had the Shiver Steel, he had the Serpent's Mask, and then he just started running amok. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, just, it, it was so dominant by Hammer's eSports in both games one and two. In game two, a lot closer because of that early game. But at the end of the day, Hammer's proving that they are 
the better team on this day. So we're going to go ahead and throw it on back to Rome and Blueberries at the desk as we still do have one more match for you today. Thank you very much, Tasty Jester. What a <laughs> game here. And uh, yeah, that was just a clear 2-0 sweep. Just a better team this day, as Tasty Bacon said. Um, nothing wrong with that statement. But overall, I feel that Hammers, they were just playing it down. Super self-confident. Yeah. Picking what they like, even if they were... Like, I never had the feeling that they were going or giving the draft out of control here. No. I feel that everything went to...